today. Despite it being the middle of summer, we're going to take a look at an easy way to make a super realistic snow base. So then guys, snow bases. Often attempted, but actually quite hard to get right. There's plenty of ideas and methods out there, but today I'm gonna to have a look at the technique that I've been using for my brand new Custodes project. So there's no end of products on the market and plenty of ideas available of how to do a realistic snow effect with just things lying around your house, such as baking soda and PVA glue. I've tried a fair few of these in the prepping for this project and actually most of them I found that I wasn't overly happy with the effect that they gave, whether it just be not particularly realistic or in some cases not hard enough wearing. It took me a while to really settle on what I wanted, but this technique uses Games Workshop's Valhalla and Blizzard, which is nice and easily available pretty easy to use and has a nice effective look to it. And then just some of your real basic basing techniques, so cork for rocks and a bit of uh, modeling sand, just to give a nice kind of rocky, snowy, and in this one, we'll show you how to do a little ice pool as part of it as well. So no matter what gaming system that you're building these bases for, whether it be a Song of Ice and Fire and you're building a Night's Watch army, or whether you're doing a spot of 40K and you're building some space puppies, have a look at this method, give it a try. There's nothing particularly crazy in here, but for me, it gives a nice, good, realistic effect without a huge amount of work. So then, to start off, I'm gonna be ripping up some cork sheet to create some rocky outcrops on the base. This cork sheet can normally fairly easily be found in railway or hobby shops, but I tend to pick mine up on eBay. So using super glue, I'm going to now start arranging this cork onto the base. The cork is porous, so be careful not to stick your fingers to the base, as it has a tendency of soaking through. I'm going to build up a few layers of cork onto this base to provide it with a bit of height. As features, I'll also create a plateau for the bottle to stand on. And you'll also notice that I've left a hole in the middle of the base. This will eventually be made into an icy pool. It's normally a good idea if you can use some fairly irregular shapes on here that just makes it a bit more realistic. Next we're going to work on getting some texture onto the base. Grab your super glue out and apply to certain areas of the base sparingly. Try not to go overboard on this step but pick out areas where stones or dirt may normally build up. And then as the super glue is set in, we'll just have a little sprinkle of modeling sand and let it dry. For the icy pool, we also need some texture for the bottom. But for this, I've used a very thin super glue and used a very fine sprinkle so as not to fill up the area. Something like Games Workshop's Astro Granite Debris would also work in small amounts. For the top of the rocks, we're gonna use my favorite crackle paint. Add some Martian Iron Earth in a nice thick coat to the top of the rocks and let it dry. Generally, the thicker the coats, the better the effect will turn out, but it does take longer to dry. So our base is now nicely textured and ready for priming. I'll now head out in a nicely ventilated area and using Games Workshop's Chaos Black Spray, I'll give the base a nice even coating. As always when spraying, there are a few areas where the coverage isn't so great. So I'll give the base a coat of Vallejo's Game Air Black. Now to make the base actually look rocky, we'll take the Dawnstone Dry Paint and using a dirt cheap soft makeup brush that I found on eBay, I'll dry brush heavily over the base to pick out all of those raised areas. For the icy pool, we need to make it really stand out. 
so we're going to paint it blue. Here I'm layering on a real thick coat of Vallejo's French Blue. I'll be blending this in a minute, so it's definitely not time for two thin coats. Whilst the French Blue is still wet, we're then going to use a mix of French Blue and Electric Blue in the middle and then with a nice clean wet brush we'll then start to blend the two tones together. This is a great opportunity to practice your wet blending skills as for this, as we'll be covering it up, you don't need to get a perfectly uh, clean transition. So a couple of passes of this and a small dab of Electric Blue in the middle and we'll let it dry fully before the next step. Now we're going to need something to act as the water. There are lots of products on the market, but for this I'm going to use the AK Interactive Still Water. This is one of my favourite products for this job, as I found that it sets lovely and clear and is super easy to work with. It does however shrink quite a bit, so you'll need to use a few layers of this. Just make sure you let it dry properly in between each layer, and as you apply it make sure there are no bubbles, and then leave it set for a while. Now the water is all dry, I'm going to add the ice. Again, there are a lot of products on the market for this job, but today I'm going to go simple and grab out my thin super glue and apply super thin layers to the water texture using a cocktail stick. This layer of super glue will then set and form a frosting on top of the water texture, which actually looks quite like thin ice. For the snow, I'm going to use Games Workshop's Valhalla and Blizzard. I've tried quite a few products for this purpose, but this texture paint, for me, gives the most realistic, fluffy snow that I've found. As mentioned, there are other techniques that you can use, but this stuff is so simple and yet very effective. I tend to apply it with an older brush rather than using a texture tool, as with the tiny bit of water added, I find that it spreads pretty well. I'll build this up on areas that the snow will often form such as the cracks of the rock and the recesses, but don't forget to layer some on top of the icy water to really tie it in with the rest of the base. You do need to be a little careful with adding the snow not to go overboard, as you've done so much good work with the icy pool and with the rocks that we don't want to cover it all up with bright white snow. So now we just need to finish it off by tidying the rim of the base up with a bit of Vallejo Game Air Black again, and we're all set. And there we are, a nice simple, realistic snow base. So I've been building these bases for my Adeptus Custodes army, but with this technique it really doesn't matter what gaming system you're building them for. There are plenty of additions that you can add in, so things like tufts, skulls or dead primaris lieutenants that will just give a bit more feeling and push the effect slightly, a little bit more characterful to suit your army that you're using them for. So thanks for watching the video guys, hopefully you got some value out of it and if you do attempt this technique then I'd be really interested to see some pictures. As always I can be found on social media, on Twitter or on Instagram, so just do a search for Spray Black Studios and you'll find me. And please feel free to just uh, tag me in some pictures. As always guys, if you don't want to miss any further uploads, then please hit that subscribe button down below. And please feel free to share this video to your friends. I'm sure there are plenty of Space Wars players out there that need some basing ideas. And remember guys, if all else fails, spray it black and start again. <laughs>